Kairi Kaja is not that effective. <gasps> oh, oh, they go in anyway, Wolf. They go, they go in anyway because, again, this is a wombo combo of snatching and killing or a cheeky meta. But anyways, SRG picking up the Eve. Even though Wolf didn't like it, Fireflux picked up the carry. So with that being said, casters, you guys seen the draft. Now it's your turn. If you had to compare it um, to Fireflux, and I think at this point, right, I, I don't know how the carry is going to get like effective damage in if every single time you have to deal with real world manipulation. But with that being said, we're going into the land of Dawn once more for the second best of five between SRG Salango Red Giants on the blue side up against Fireflux Esports on the blue side. On the red side. Am I colorblind? No. Let's get into it. Both on purple. <laughs> Colors. They're hard, man. <laughs> They're real hard. The Pride of Turkia rocking a lineup that I personally like, especially when you're able to just say, I'm going to be aggressive, I'm going to dive in. The Swiss Army Knife of Silango the Giants box could work out. Maybe if they're able to get it online and if they synchronize fast enough. Which is weird to ask from a team that has been winning for the past 100 plus days. Mm -hmm. But also, people have to consider, they're a relatively new team. Like, compared to Fireflux Esports, who have been together for like two years now? Yeah. The synergy from, from uh, the Turkish here. Yeah, I, I think, you know, for the longest of times when we're looking at the overall philosophy of SRG, it's about, yeah, let's get the chemistry down and then let's start laying uh, the foundation for something even bigger. But in these early stages of the game, I'm a little worried, right? Because they supercharged TNZ, making sure that they got Apex 47 to leash him on the opposite side of the map to reduce the time it takes to actually clear his entire jungle to keep up the pace with the guys. Mm -hmm. Which is a total switch up in core priorities because Five Luxy Sports, it's clear. It's Rosa and it's Sunshine. For Silango Red Giants, it's Innocent and Sekai. TNZ running through two. Sekai is pushed back by Apex and they uh, jockey for position here with the turtle spawning in just a wee bit. Yeah, as you can see, right now Ling barely does any damage to TNZ on this Boxia, right? At this point of time, I don't think the first turtle should be contested. If not, at most, it should be a drive-by. But game fact, Rosa leads all the players with the highest damage permitted at 4,419. That's most HP of heroes from early to mid. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Rosa can burst them all down. Oh, wait. Check this out. Apex. Oh. Forcing Sikais to respond. There's the retribution. Now, Turtle should all be but secured for Fireflox. Yeah, and I mean, Sikais, he's just trying to get the flicker out of it. Ooh. Here we know? go. The Eve just dashing on through. Pulls the first blood from the NZ. Yooms gets punished, though. I, I guess that's a trade for both. I mean, Pyrrhic victory here for Fireflux. But wait, Alien's still standing. Crab gets hit with the onward. He does take down Alien, and he pays the price with his life. Oh, so close. They, they might find out of the trade. They're still going. Sick, guys. Jumps on through Stormy. Can he survive? Gets the Terrify. Oh, no. He dodges it. Sick, guys. Is there enough damage? That's the jump. The box unite. The he finds him. Can he get one more? Stormy's gonna live. Oh my goodness, both of these teams refuse to lose out on this trade. Technically, SRG on that very first one for one, they were trading upwards, right? Let's look at this replay one more time, because once the fight really does extend itself, and especially since it's like below five minutes, the death timers are super short. Let's not forget that TNZ, especially with that shield, Unity is able to cover a lot of distance. All this while, up top, Innocent and Sunshine are still at their way in. Mm -hmm. They're still staring each other down, doing fight poses, and talk his smack because they're not ready for the fight yet. I think this is the right way to deal with a Roger. I think all throughout wild card group stage and now in the knockouts, we've seen Rogers try to do things early because, mm -hmm. again, that's what early Sky Piercer spells out, right? Like, you got to fight early, early, early. But no, I think there is a tempo, there is a beat that you have to follow, and that's what Innocent here respects, and that's why Sunshine's farming up too. Say, guys, what's he doing? Did he steal the buff? Yep, he tried to steal the buff knowing that TNZ is going to be showing up on the opposite side of the map, and I think at this point of time, right, Fireflux, they've got a lot of tempo onto SRG's side. At this point of time, I think we can also talk about, oh, wow, er, wait, hold on, that doesn't seem right, but he's already got 2.7. Early Thunderbelt coming in from Innocent? Oh, 
That's All right, so, so he wants to get the hybrid. This is a fighter, Roger. Now wait, the crash on the Stormy Tempest. The Blade stole it away, knocking out the Eve. That is one man down. Silangora Giants missing a member. Firefox Esports making a beeline straight for the Turtle. Early Puissance, can Yumes deny? Oh, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to deny this, especially without the back. Oh, Divine Judgment by Apex 47 finds one. Cram Flickers away. Sunshine moving forward, flickering. To f or rather, no, just dash it on forward. Yumes go down two double kill for sunshine this is oh. this is not good this is not good because these kills are getting funneled into both rosa and as well as sunshine the cores the cores right and i think that srg if they have to adapt their plan right now they've got to slow their roll they're going to need a lot more items before they are relevant and most importantly right they need this rizla to be in the middle of this fight great play coming in for apex 47 this is why tempo is so very important oh Wow, they, 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 it's giving turn, man. It's giving massive turn. They understand that we have to win the fight first before we can even consider getting the turtle. Despite Five Flux being ahead at the time, now there are 3K gold ahead. I mean, I mean, if you compare Sunshine to Innocent, it's been a while since we've seen Innocent be down on gold. And I think it's great for Sunshine with this huge injection. This is going to help with Fire Flux Esports' trajectory coming in towards that mid game. But at the same time, their priorities isn't even just taking this turtle. It's about how much they can fish out of SRG. Yep, Sunshine won the way in. Another Divine Judgment welcomed by a penalty zone and the pull. Yume's very low. Tempest of Blades up into the air. Yume's taken out already. Rosa scored in by Stormy. Aliens in trouble. Penalty zone by Cram. Stopping the exit. And that's a win. Selangor Giants, two for one. They trade up on this one. But in the meantime, wait. Oh, Sunshine getting some really great damage onto that structure because SRG want to make sure that Cram is going to be there first for the next upcoming turtle fight, right? So Innocent, he's going to be chilling down on the bot side of the map. Oh, Apex just defending this the hard way. Oh, oh he's taking his time with his Ballista. They're going to lose the turret. And will they lose his life? He's still up. Innocent gets a few bits on him. TNZ with the Bakshi Unite. It's a 2v4, potentially. They're still going. Popping that Poissance. Here's Alien just up the corner. He jumped on the Yums. Forces one. There's the Onward. Looking for the Earth Shatter. Primordial Wrath up defensively. Nice bait by Salango the Giants. Really good stuff here. It's kind of interesting to see that Innocent is trying to minimize as many mistakes as possible, right? Like, he definitely had an angle to kill Apex 47 there, but decided not to do it, thinking that maybe the Divine Judgment is coming up. Let's not forget the alien was missing off the map, so he could be rotating in. He's calculating all the possibilities. Oh! The Flicker Divine Judgment catches one. Yumes gets the Immortality pop. Stormy swiping away, swiping away. Yumes. Oh, gonna get that. I'm offended and they walk away from it. So Rosa finds one. Train for Cram. One for one so far. Down goes Rosa. Double kill for Innocent. The guy falls. Couple of pinwheels chasing oh. down. Innocent with the shutdown. Triple kill for Cent. What a, oh my goodness, what a nasty play there. Sometimes you just forget that, hey, Innocent still has Flicker. And honestly, if he missed that skill shot, it was basically over for him. So they started off dropping down the RWM after the engage, the initial pull. And that was the whole idea having this Eve. But just look at the way that they played this, right? Innocent targets down their low targets. Sakai unfortunately dies. But at the same time, Innocent is very aware of the low members, the low cores from Fireflux Esports' team. He went from target to target. Target, man. Found Rosa. Next. Target. Next. Oh, man. I, this is a build that I would like to study more. I want to see more of this. I mean, Wait, you on it. continues. Rosa with a stolen. Oh. oh, RW. Another one goes. Stormy falls. And just like that, they force out a Tempest of Blades. Silangora Giants. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Turtle turned into a Lord. This is amazing. The Turkish are doing it. Can they blitz it? Oh, massive win. Divine Judgment one more time. Sakai's falls. Salamza and Giants are fighting out of their breath. I mean, they're adapting too much. They're responding to everything they see from the side of Fireflux Esports. And I think they need to just calm down and honestly slow down this game. As much as they want to accelerate it, let's have a look at the goal, right? Now, e much more even. Wow, Sky Pierce on top of the endless battle purchases coming from Innocent. He is strong. And at the same time, the Trinity build from Sunshine is almost complete. Mint lane is where you see the biggest difference here because one is Blood Wings, the other opting to go for the Ice Queen's wand to play as utility. So Stormy, he's not the main carry here. 
He's just the emergency eject button. Not just the mid, the mid lane duo. Because you'll see there's more than a thousand between Apex 47 and Yumes. That's why there were two Divine Judgments that happened in that fight. Mm -hmm. He was rocking fleeting time. It's it's nasty. But now they're... Oh, no. The flicker and the DJ one more time. The RWM coming in from Stormy. They're fighting inside SRG's kill box. That's why Apex 47 is going to fall. As Ooh. well as Alien. They're punishing the Turkish. And down goes Cram. Sunshine gets one. Two for one so far. They do lose out on the top lane tier two. And as well, mid lane tier one. And oh no, Sekais needs this. Grand Theft Purple, uh, Fire Plus Esports. All right, it's tough to say that SRG traded up now, losing that purple buff. It means you lose a lot of influence across the map. The upcoming fights, I don't think they should take it just yet, but if they can crack open this map, man, they are just trading back and forth. Look at this. Oh, Rosa forced to use a stolen Tempest of Blades. I'm offended. Coming in from Yumes, Yenzi crashing and leaning hard into this engage. M27 with the conceal. Which target is he looking for? All right, I'll take this one right here. Yumes gets the knock up. Sunshine serves up a kill. Yeah, I think that SRG right now, Yums, he might be overheating a little. I think he's making up too many calls and he needs to calm down because Fireflux Esports, because of this fleeting time, it's really making the difference because he's been able to assist so many kills already. Eight out of the 13. Huge. Huge oh, here. Whoa. For Apex. Oh, Sekai, where are you going? Looking for the knockdown, looking for the stun. Oh, the Unite knocks him off the wall. Sekai is on the ground and now underneath it. This is rough. This is really rough for SRG. They're not going to be able to get to the late games on at time at this point. And I think that Fireflux Esports, they know it as well. That's why they're applying so much pressure. Keep trading with us. We're going to always trade back. They're willing to fight it tooth and nail. And it's not like macro is thrown out the window. If anything, it always results to macro. Mm -hmm. With, this is so different compared to when we saw Fireflux Esports play, uh, it, you know, last year, right? The Turkish delight, as we like to call it. This is such a polar opposite, even. Oh, well, that wasn't their full lineup. If I'll, re if I'll recall and I'll re remind people, Rosa was out busy uh, doing, uh, you know, real life things. Mm -hmm. Rosa was getting an education and now, uh, the Queen is back, uh, and now they're going as far as they could, maybe even stopping SRG's streak. But I don't want to say it anything too soon, right? Check out the river control here from Fireflux, Tenzi and Alien. This 4 and one technically 2 and 3 uh, lineup from Fireflux Esports working out so well. Look at this, the sandwich play from down bottom. Apex 47 catches Zooms after the conceal. Does not pull the trigger. Mm, I think it's not a good idea to pull the trigger onto Yumes now that he has the immortality, right? It just means that the fight is going to be extra extended and you're going to be sitting under the bombardment of the RWF. We saw the damage dealt and you and start right now. Stormies is currently on top. If we're looking at the gold lead, it's only 3,000 despite all the blood and structures that have collapsed. It's surprising that this is only a 3k lead for Fireflux. Yeah, well, what this says to me is Selangor Giants, they know that the game isn't over. We're just about entering late game and stormy sick guys innocent they can still build more items and they can find better engages what is this angle oh Whoa. oh that that's a that's a scary angle they forced the flicker away from stormy Oh, luckily, Sakai's spotted them out just before the engage actually connected, relaying the information back to the SRG to tell them, hey, we got to start backing off here. We get flanked, it's basically over for us because Stormy, keep in mind that the RWM only goes towards one direction. It's not yep. like he has a 360 coverage like Farsa. Yeah, you, you can't relocate where you commit that box to, uh, which so far has been on point. And now Tienzi jump in the walls. Checking these rivers, checking these bushes the hard way. I mean, they can afford to. I'm offended. Apex 47 in trouble. The RWM, the answer. Back ram coming in with a penalty zone. Sakai finds Apex, cuts his wings, takes him down, traded out for Cram. One for one. Yumes gets his immortality pop. Still alive, but just barely. In goes Alien to the backline. Sunshine's down. Yumes as well. Two for two so far. Tenzi and Rosa chased down by Innocent. Alien playing footies with Stormy. Oh, this is a bad look for Fireflux Esports. Alien might fall here. There's a knockout for the damage. Oh. Down oh, goes no. Alien. Oh, Innocent still alive, but just barely. The Rose Queen keeps on going. Stormy. 
still alive. Sikai's with the kill. Could this be a wipeout? TNZ still standing, but not so long. Double kill for Sikai's. Woo. All an, fall down. An unofficial wipeout. No. So bold of them to actually continue to rush this down. But Sakai's he's already maxed, he's already maxed out on EXP, right? He's got all the levels in the world. Uncontested. Can't really stop this situation at all as they're going to be able to find another pick. All right, Apex 47. Had a dream, had a hope. Maybe with my passive, maybe with my uh, Ring of Order, we can get it. But too little, too late. Massive objective scored over to SRG. Let's see that fight one more time. Yeah, we saw all the flickers come out of Firefox. As soon as all the flickers came out, the RWM, well, Stormy didn't have to do much after that, right? I think the engagement from Cram could have been just a little bit better. It was just a little bit more to the left. It would have hit so many more targets. But I think that Innocent, this Thunderbell is really proving a lot of dividends. He's taken a lot of chip damage unintentionally, but it's not his choice. And yet, he's still so close to outplaying even the Thorn Queen. Yeah, he's allowed to just walk around. He's allowed to, like, take hits normally and keep his like and pounce for when it really matters. It's, it's ridiculous. Let's look at the items here to see what we're working with. Because so far, um, I'm surprised that he's not taking as much damage as he could be taking. Sunshine also in a very similar position. He's pretty strong as well, but the Sky is honestly making uh, making these fights much cleaner for SRG now that they have it. And not to mention, has stacked it as well. Oh, I see the uh, interaction now. Check it out. Thunderbelt goes through the wind of nature. Mm -hmm. And with that, it'll also go through via Sky Piercer. So regardless, if, if Sunshine pops the wind of nature, he will still die. You, you got it right on the head. Right on the head. And I think that Fireflux Esports need to recognize the way that they manage their fight really boils down to how many resources can we get out of them. And that's why you see they only fight one side, especially at the stage of the game when their battle, battle, battle spells are up. Yeah, yeah. now the other two, as the Langlore Giants, are ahead now. Be, be it for the map, be it for the kills, and Fireflux Esports Sports, not going to let that stop them. Not going to let that be a detriment to their aggression. TNZ and Apex 47 going hunting. Pop to conceal. Finds the weird angle again, Ooh. but wow, Silangor Giants adapting to the situation. You see this now? Yeah. They're not allowing for them to get sandwiched anymore. Exactly. They're, they're cut literally in half. It's a parallel between the two, vertically controlling opposite sides of the map. And now this tier two op on the top side, as soon as somebody shows themselves, and especially if it's a core, that's when you're expecting Fireflux to then take the space back. Oh, and because of how SRG is controlling the correct side of the map, at least for this uh, moment here, the sequence, they're able to steal away an orange. I mean, look at this. They've got so many, like, technically rear view mirrors, making yeah. sure that all the little gaps that maybe Fireflux could look to find that flank are covered. So great coverage, great vision from SRG side, great ideas from both of these teams. They got eyes on the back of their heads. And to be honest, Fireflux Esports, it seems like they have a extra set of appendages as well, right? Because of how <laughs> aggressive they are. It's like, where are those punches coming from? Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Uh, but that was the early game. That was the mid game. Now in the late game, now that SRG is a little more aware and their footwork is just uh, more than fancy. I'll say it's exquisite because again, it's been a while since Fireflux was able to find the kill angle. This Lord is... I'll say 60-70% favored SRG. I don't know. It's really, really dangerous here because we have to consider the amount of CC, right? Like, we, we, Divine Judgment, uh, Earth Shadow coming in from Alien, Unite. maybe the Fear from... Oh, yeah. The, I mean, but you're already on top of that Lord, so I don't think you can... I mean, there, there is a possibility. Let's not count it out, of course, with the Shield Unity. But then Yums has multiple two forms of CC. Uh -huh. Penalty Zone as well. Ooh, wait. Forced out the Flicker from Cram. Are they going to do anything about this, though? Uh, you see I mean, the conceal from Yums. The response from Cram was just to lean forward. I, I guess SR, uh, SRG made the call, right? You baited it out. Feign the response. And now they knock up Yums. Fireflux Esports looking for the re-engage. Tianzi coming in with the unity. False engage from the back. I'm offended from Yums. Lord here at half health. Mm, I think they want Alien to use his ult. They want him to use the Primal Wrath at some point of time. But they're going to creep oh. around the right side. Oh, 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 oh. Lord here at the 10th of its health. Can they force up oh, the no. air? Roll from the backside. Crown with the penalty zone. Already, the Lord secured. That was a blade stolen away. Down goes Innocent. This is looking bad. You've taken out. 
Cram gets his immortality pop. Look at Sakai's going straight for the proxy. Three for none. Gideon, three for none. I mean, they did score the Lord, but can Silango and Giants even capitalize? I mean, they can't. And I think that Fire Flux Esports, the fact that they took out three means that honestly, they don't even have a response back, right? Let's look at this fight one more time because unfortunately, they did not clear the lane bush down on the bottom side of the map, right? And that's why Innocent got caught in the first place by Apex without Apex having to use his flicker. So that was already the very first mistake here we see from SRG. A blaring mistake, in a matter of fact. Oh no, Sakai's in trouble. Tempest of Blade. Can Apex 47 get it? He doesn't have fight back, but there it is! Shut down! Stormy trying to save his teammate! But he can't do that. He can secure the purple for them. But SRG! Oh, the flippity flop! The switch up one more time. Turkey on top. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Again, great chemistry, great decision, decisions being made from both sides. Even though, yes, SRG did make the mistakes, we saw the instant response. Hey, let's minimize the damage that could potentially come towards us. We got the Lord at the end of the day. And even for Fireflux, they're like, okay, next time we can make these angles actually work for us. We just got to keep working them slowly. They're more acute now. Mm -hmm. It used to always just be Apex and Tianzi or Apex and Apex. Alien, but now even Rosa can come in now. Oh no, Tianzi's in trouble. The early puissance, the penalty zone. Yeah, the back crab's in trouble. Down he goes. Tianzi might get his immortality pop. Nope, he's still alive. Clean pickoff for Fireflox. Very nice pickoff indeed, and it's proving to be so valuable. Alien does so much damage in that primal uh, with the primordial form. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous how much he's getting away with this right now. And I think that even for SRG like Cram, there's so little that he can do about it. He wants to find these big engages, but Fireflux Esports are distancing themselves from each other to make sure that penalty zone doesn't get 100% efficiency. Yep, uh, and you're talking about efficiency, you're talking about effective damage. Mm -hmm. uh, Stormy has dealt a lot of damage. I mean, number one in the charts, but... There were very few times that SRG was able to capitalize on that, to make the most of those damage, turn them into actual kills. And that happened in the, I'd say, late game. Now we're approaching the ultra late game. Now that Fireflux is in control once more, Sekai's going to struggle to get his purple. Uh, he tries, he tries, he, unable unable to close the distance enough to get a clean retry on he, it. But He peeped. He peeped, he peeped. But with that being said, 25 more seconds until the next Lord spawns, and I think they need to have some kind of game plan here. Let's look at the items and maybe we'll get a better idea because I'm seeing the GDS coming out from the side of Sekai just to make sure even after his ult, he's able to create some mm. form of distance. Yep, and now we have barefoot gold laners. That means they're just <laughs> throwing out the movement because all that matters is as long as I'm in the fight, I get there, I need the extra oomph. I need the extra damage. And that's what Sunshine and Innocent have invested in. Mm -hmm. But Innocent did decide to go for the DHS, which is really important here on top of the Malefic Roar, right? Because yep. now TNZ and Alien can't just be... Uh, uh, sorry, they, TNZ and Alien can't just walk up anymore, right? Not easy. They Not can't easy. just hold their ground like Carl TZ in the previous game. Yep, they're going to feel it for sure. Sekai gets spotted here, forcing out an early Tempest of Blades. Because again, anytime Apex has that green, anytime Apex has a Divine Judgment, it's trouble. Oh no, Alien. And flickering out, get caught by the I'm Offended. Immortality pop through. Sunshine gonna go down here. Pop in the wind of nature. Gets the Immortality pop. Look at the back line. Innocent found out by TNZ. Sekai takes out Sunshine. Currently the trade two for one. Can Fireflux Esports equalize here? They're gonna try. Sekai's just gonna get out of there, but I think Yums should fall down. Wait, TNZ, wait, hold on. Oh, he got cornered. Oh! Force use the Winter Crown. Gets a juggle. Still alive, but not for long. And that might be it. Another Winter Crown trigger. And an Immortality. And the juggle. Rosa flickering on out. And Sekai spots the Queen after the stolen Tempest of Blades. As soon as they land, they get taken out. Apex 47 left. This could be it. I mean, they're still street fighting. They're still brawling. Arr. It hasn't ended. And an RWM to break immortality as they're cracking on the inhibitors. Oh, the flicker by Apex 47 saving himself. Alien He's going to need every little bit of kit. Oh, the concealed play. He gets bursted down. And so will the base. How was that an end angle? How is that even an end angle? Who can even foresee that far ahead? Maybe synergy isn't what SRG has. Maybe they're just clairvoyant. It's, I, I can't. This game. Few things I want to talk about. First of all, that was close. That was second was. of all, even though Fireflux lost, but I feel like Kaja is now starting to become a staple in, in this meta. It's, uh, I think the threat of it, especially when you're talking about uh, assassins being locked in, is great. Pickoff potential, obviously, too. But really what stuck out for me as we look at the highlights here 
is just how well the timing was from SRG. A lot of the kind of overlapping, the overlaying they did, and dealing with the Winter Crowns, the Immortalities, <laughs> the Primal Wrath even, was just on point how they dealt with it. Oh, this was uh, one of the most important ones. In a sense, that proves to us why the Thunderbolt first pick item was uh, perfect. And by the way, there were so many outplays. And I, I have to give it to Fireflux, honestly. Even after losing this, because of how they drafted 